Hey guys, it's me again. I'm coming to you today because I wanted to share with you guys that I got my BTS magazine right here and I read the whole thing today. And remember, like my previous, my previous video, you can get your BTS magazine from Compton. Don't be afraid, remember guys? It is all good in the hood. So I was reading the BTS magazine and for those of you who don't know who BTS is, they are a K-pop group. They are called the Bangtan Sanyang Sanyandun. So BTS stands for um, that. And it means Bulletproof Boy Scouts. So I think the Bulletproof um, Bangtan is for them like, I'm thinking, well, this is my own interpretation, that the Bulletproof is for whatever haters or whatever people say about them that is negative, that they got their Bulletproof vests on and they can just take it and it'll just go back out. Because BTS is all about positivity. Their fan base is called ARMY. I'm not a part of ARMY officially, but I, I feel like I am because I support them and I buy their merchandise and I love their music. So the person who got me into uh, BTS, the K-pop group, is my friend Rowena. So she's the one that um, said, hey, listen to this song from BTS. I go, oh, I've heard about them, but I didn't really pay attention to them. So we used to go on our little drives in Long Beach and have our tea therapy. And well, not tea therapy, but our BTS night drives. That's what we used to call it. So she would bring all these new BTS songs and <coughs> she would share them with me and then she'd tell me the meanings behind the songs and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Me thinking that all musicians, all K-pop uh, groups, they just sing songs that they think are gonna be catchy for us, the fans, to listen to. But no, I'm sure that other artists have meanings behind their songs as well. But when she was explaining to me a lot of the songs and the meanings behind those songs, I'm like, these kids really put in some thought or whoever's helping them with the songs. Cause I know each individual, there's seven boys. I know that each one of them does put in their say for the songs. And um, so when she was explaining to me and telling me the songs to listen to, and she told me the meetings behind them, I, it like really caught my attention. I was like, wow, this is pretty good, you know? So I got into BTS and K-pop last year. I'm a real big fan of K-dramas. I've been watching them for years and I'm a big fan of everything Korean, the food, the culture and all that stuff. So um, listening to uh, K-pop and BTS especially is just another, um, another perk for me with the Korean culture. So I'm glad that she introduced me to um, BTS because I love them very much and they are my number one K-pop group. But being that I like um, BTS and I started listening to K-pop, now there's other groups that I listen to as well. And they have a lot of good uh, K-pop groups out there. But uh, my number one, my numero uno, as you guys all know, is BTS. BTS consists of seven members. So if you don't know anything about BTS, I'm gonna, I'm gonna school you right quick, right quick. So the oldest one is um, Jin. Well, there's Jin, there's RM, there's Suga, there's J-Hope, he's my bias, meaning I like him the most. Um, v, Jungkook, and Jimin. So there's seven of them. Um, get, I'm not gonna show you a picture or anything like that because y'all need to go buy one. Go buy one from Food for Less, I told you. Uh, <clears throat> so I was reading the whole magazine today and um, I'm glad I did. I got a lot of inside information. You, it it um, takes you on this one page about each member of the group. And so um, Rowena, I'm gonna mention her name a lot because she's the one that brought me into the BTS world. Uh, she told me to watch, she came across this one professor from, from South Korea that really got into BTS and um, she kind of like breaks it down and explains what it is they stand for the meanings behind their songs and what, you know, their whole fandom of ARMY. So they're very positive and everything has to do with ARMY. They give a lot of thanks and credit to ARMY. And they don't just cater to the Korean fan base or the American fan base or the Spanish fan base because they are all over, let me tell you, even in Saudi Arabia, in all kinds of countries you would never even imagine that Korean music will go to, they're there. BTS is the worldwide a popular band right now. And um, I wish them many more years of success because they're really good at what they do. And because there's seven of them and they act 
normal. They don't act and pretend and, you know, fake the funk and try to act like they need to act like this on TV. They are just them. And I, I really appreciate them because they aren't ashamed to share their emotions with each other. They hug each other. They say, I love you. You know, other fans, other Army fans, you know, they get carried away with that. They're like, oh, what if he loves them? You know what? Let's just keep it positive. Let's just be happy in this world of chaos that we're in. Let's just be positive and be happy for the boys. Be happy they're producing this music. Be happy that they want us to be happy. So they don't cater to just, like I said, Koreans or Americans. They cater to humankind. They want to touch you as a human, being you. They don't want you to be anyone else but you. And they also emphasize that how can you love other people if you cannot love yourself? Be happy you're you, love yourself, and then go out and help and love other people. And I love that about them is because their mindset and what they represent is totally captivating to me and, and I love it. And so um, I wanted to share a few things that stuck out to me in the magazine. So on page 48, it explains about this young, um, did I take notes? I sure did. <laughs> because <clears throat> I don't want to waste time and I don't want to make this too long. <clears throat> but if I do go overboard, I'm so sorry. Get yourself a cup of postum, a cup of tea, or, you know, a cup of soda. And for my cousin Ainga, I know you're going to watch this because you're one of my faithful YouTube followers. Go get you a um, Coke Zero and sit down and listen to me talk, sis. I mean, oos. Eh. <laughs> so her name is... J-I-Y-E Kim, G Gia Kim. And so she's just a regular girl that was in, um, she was, uh, is it Australia? Oh, my arm. And uh, she got a ticket, yeah, it's, it's Australia. And she heard about the hype about BTS and she's like, okay, whatever. So she went and bought her ticket and it was in Sydney, Australia. And she's Korean, so she went, she got her ticket, and she just got the seat all the way, you know, in the nosebleed area, because she's like, oh, well, you know, you've been to one concert, you've been to them all. But this is what she says. This is her experience, so I'm going to read it to you all. And, um, and this is what she says. So I, I jotted it down because I wanted to share with you guys what, you know, her expectation was, but then what reality hit. So this is what she says. She said... Her, her last name was Kim. Kim already liked the group's music, BTS, but watching them perform in May 2017 at Sydney's Kudos Bank Arena in a crowd of more than 11,000 turned her into a fan, or more precisely, a member of ARMY, which is their fan base. The official fandom name of the K-pop juggernaut. <clears throat> she said, I bought one ticket for myself and sat in the highest corner of the awkwardest position of this small stadium, says Kim a high school teacher born and raised in Australia. BTS was in the middle of their hugely successful worldwide Wings tour. So Wings is one of their albums. I expressed, you know, I expected them to be decent live singers. I expected them to dance well. I expected them to have interesting music. Kim, who's 26, she says, but what struck her was the message of the concert expressed through both song lyrics and the words uttered on stage between songs. It was a simple declaration of solidarity that resonated powerfully, Kim says. Prior to the tour, the septet, the seven of them, had released a compilation album titled You Never Walk Alone, with nearly 20 tracks grappling with the subject. Songs such as Spring Day, which is a beautiful song that I suggest you all listen to, Spring Day, and the meaning behind Spring Day. If you go onto YouTube, hit Spring Day and put explanation, it'll tell you the explanation of that particular song. And it made me cry, guys. So Spring Day, remember that by BTS. We're filled with longing for a... Okay, Spring Day. And we're filled with longing for a friend and two, exclamation, three, exclamation. That's another song. Um, ask the listener to erase all sad memories and smile holding on to each other's hands. Hearing them perform at the concert, Kim was deeply moved. When she said, when I walked outside, I just distinctly remember looking up into the sky, breathing in and thinking, that's the first time a group has made me not only want to care more about them, but care more about the world that I live in. So that goes, you know, that just shows that 
Their music and their message really touched this person. She wasn't a fan. She knew about their music. But leaving the concert and the message that they left, the impact and the impression they left on her, amazing. Like when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh. And I haven't even gone to a concert and I feel that way when I listen to their music and get the explanations behind their songs. So what she said right there was just, I just loved it because she left there feeling, you know, motivated. Like I need to love other people and love the world that I'm in and, you know, just to care more about it. So that song, Spring Day, that I told you about, that song um, is about a terrible accident that happened on the boat ferries in South Korea. And so because I want you to listen to it and get the explanation, go on YouTube, look up Spring Day explanation, explanation for the BTS song, Spring Day. It will move you to tears, really, it will. Uh, the other thing I wanted, because I don't want to spend too much time again, but, you know, I'm really passionate about this group, BTS. Be the superstar, BTS. No. <laughs> Bulletproof. Boy Scouts, what it's called. So, the other part I wanted to, um, to share with you all is the owner, or the CEO of uh, BTS. His name is uh, Bang Si Hyuk. This is him right here. Let me pick it up. That's Bong Si Hyuk right there, the idol maker. Okay, so that's him. So Time Magazine and other interviewers, they asked him a lot of questions. So one of the questions that they asked him was, which I'm gonna read to you as well. Okay, this is already 11 minutes, I'm sorry, and I'm not even done, so if you guys haven't had dinner, go ahead, have your dinner, come back, you know, you can watch this. I'm gonna put it on YouTube, so. The question was, what do you think has been the distinguishing factor that set BTS on its unique path. And this is his answer. It was the sincerity, consistency, and ability to embody the spirit of the times. When they solidified as an idol group, I promised them they would be able to pursue the music they wanted, including hip hop. Because it was hip hop, they could express their thoughts and we wouldn't touch that. If in turn the company felt they weren't being genuine, then we would comment. I kept that promise and believe that had an impact. I personally feel it's not always necessary for an artist to speak their mind, but I believe at the time BTS touched something that young people from all over the world were seeking. They don't shy away from speaking about the pain felt by today's generation. They respect diversity and justice, the rights of youth and marginalized people and marginalized people. I think all of these factors worked in their favor. And so I think he was being true to what he said because BTS originally started out as a hip hop group. And um, Rowena and myself, we like that era because they have a lot of good groups. Like one of our favorite songs is Just One Day. If you haven't heard Just One Day, listen to it because it's the bomb. So Just One Day is different from Spring Day, okay? So the comment by um, Bang, the the CEO of BTS, you know, I'm glad that he stayed true to what he said. He'll let the boys continue with their hip hop, but from their hip hop era, you know, where they're all rapping and just being all hardcore, now they're a K-pop idol group. And I think this is where, where they, you know, they found themselves being a K-pop idol group, be meaning they hip hop music and rap, you know, that's different from K-pop idols like that upbeat kind of um, music where hip hop is, you know, obviously R&B and rap. So they were able to turn themselves into the K-pop idol, which is where the money was really in um, South Korea. And um, they were still able to incorporate their hip hop and their rap with being K-pop idols. So because their um, owner said that they, they wouldn't touch, you know, them being a, a hip hop, adding their hip hop music in there, I think um, incorporating all of that into their group and into their style is what made them flourish the way that they did because they were still able to, to rap and sing and at the same time do different choreography and different fashion and stuff of being a K-pop idol. So I'm glad that he stuck to his guns on that one. The other one I wanted to share was on page 63. Let's see. And this is just giving a, a little insight on... Um, on the boys and the imp and the how they really impacted because right now they're the most there's three um, there's three other labels that are bigger that are the biggest 
And you'll see with what I read right now that um, Big Hit Entertainment, which is the label that BTS is under, has surpassed them. So it says that Bang, which is um, BTS's manager, Bang's music empire is built on the strength of the seven young artists of BTS who debuted in 2013, competing with South Korea's older and larger big three K-pop entertainment agencies, the first one being SM Entertainment, YG Entertainment, and JYP Entertainment, and excelling beyond them, placing his group at the top of global charts. So, BTS surpassed those three big labels, and they did it on their own. They started off with just them starting with a small company, and a lot of Koreans, I gotta say, a lot of Koreans, a lot of companies didn't think that they would make it, you know, because as in anything, you have to start off small. So they started off small and they made their way up. So as in anything, you know how you start a new company and you're just trying to get those clients and trying to get those people. Well, thankfully with BTS and their style of singing and their sincerity and their hard work and their positive attitudes and touching the youth, you know, the young generation and giving them positive energy like you are the ones that, um, you know, we feed off of your energy and we'll, you think you're alone sometimes, but you're not, you know, we're always going to be there. So it was very personal, personable, the way they, um, they treat ARMY. And I, I think the young people, they really, they really grabbed onto that, you know, young people and po old people, you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, we have those times as well. And the other thing, let's see, that I wanted to share with you guys is, let's see what I said here. Oh, just just uh, saying that they, they surpassed them. So, so it says, a K-pop company going public isn't unique to Big Hit, as Paul Hahn, co-founder of K-pop news site, all allkpop.com, explains in time, what is different is the big three Cape Cop company, companies launched with relatively small market caps when they were small companies with room for growth. Big Hit is going public when they're at the top of K-pop and their 10-figure market cap is larger than the big three companies combined. So, booyah to ya. <laughs> so, what BTS is doing with Big Hit Entertainment surpass... <coughs> surpassed those three big labels, SM, JYP, and who's the other one? YG. So that's got a lot to say for the things that they are doing and the things that, that they have accomplished. So there's a lot of other stuff that, that they've done, you know, that I'm not mentioning because there's so much content that you can see on, um, on YouTube. And that's where I get a lot of my information. First of all, I get all my information from Rowena. Cause she's army and she like sees a lot of their content. She's on it with, um, you know, being on those articles, reading them and watching all kinds of concerts and their content and their concerts. So I have my own personal BTS person that keeps me informed and also stuff that I watch on YouTube and magazines that I read. So two more things I wanted to share, then I'll let you all go with my BTS information. So this one BTS here, as in um, Time Magazine says that they have, well, there's pictures of 20 albums here since they debuted in, in um, 2013. Of the 20, I have five. So am I gonna plan on getting the rest? I am, but don't tell my family because they, you know, they'd be like, my mouth, this isn't Samoan. My mouth, I'm like, you know what? You do you and I'll do me. If this makes me happy, let me be. Oh, dang, I should be a rapper. That just rhymed. Anyways, here are the 20 albums, but I have five of the 20. So I did want to share something that I think I, I noted here. Um, let's see. I did want to say, oh, okay, it's just, um, I think, a comment that, A comment that one of them said it says they said nope they, they said that but I can't really I can't really get my thoughts together and, and share with you guys but anyways those were the 20 albums and of the 20 I have five 
So let's see. Oh, sometimes, okay. Sometimes they're compared to, people are saying, you know, they're the 21st century Beatles. But RM said that, you know, that's it's an honor. RM is one of, he's the leader of the group. And he's the only one that's fluent in English. And Homeboy learned his English by watching all the seasons of Friends. And um, he's a very intelligent boy. And he has a high IQ. So I'm not surprised that he learned his English from watching Friends. <laughs> So the rest of them speak some English. I think they're, they understand more than they speak. But RM is the only one that's fluent in English. And so he's the leader, and he's a very good leader. He's very calm, and he's very um, uh, good with his words. So he represents them well. He's also the one that's, you know, um, when they get into arguments, he's the one that has to go over there and be the... Um, the mediator between them. So they chose a very good um, leader. And RM does a great job. Uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm looking at all these things, my notes that I wrote. And, you know, it's just not the same when you think you're ready. And then when you go on, it's like, uh, duh, uh. So sorry about that. But those were a few things that I wanted to share um, with you. There's so much more... So much more content and so much more I can say about BTS. But if you haven't gotten the magazine, and if you're interested, I would suggest that you you get a magazine because it's really good. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. Also, um, um, on Netflix, um, I'm a blink now too. I like this group called Blackpink. They're girls and their music is bomb. They're really good. And um, there's a Netflix special about them, Blackpink. They're four different girls. Uh, one is from Australia. I want to say one is from New Zealand. There's one straight up from Korea, and the other one is from Thailand. So the four of them, with their with their um, diverse backgrounds, they mesh well together. And let me tell you, when they're train, they're auditioning to be a K-pop group. It is no joke. I mean, they can start off with like 40 to 50 girls, and then in the end, from 40 to 50 girls, maybe even more. Who knows? They only pick four. So like, you can get close to like your roommates that you don't really know, but you get close to them because they're still going and you're still in the runnings to be in this new group. And then all of a sudden you wake up and they're gone. So it's a tough, it's a tough, um, it's a tough cutthroat, um, like dream to be a K-pop idol. It's possible, but you gotta have, you gotta, got, you, have, you gotta have, it's not for the weak. You have to have some guts. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie. A, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, K-pop idols, even BTS, they go through struggles because they're human. They aren't BTS 24-7. They are normal boys as well. So they go through depression. They want to live a normal life. They, they go through different pains and stuff, but they deal with it together in their group and they deal with it, deal with, it with their manager and they find things you know, to help them out. But we gotta remember that aside from BTS, aside from being a K-pop idol that everyone loves, they are still humans just like us and they are still normal. And I wish them to live a normal life even after being BTS or even during. If they can have some kind of normalcy in their lives, that would benefit them so much. So um, one song too that I wanted to, that I think I'm gonna do a different vlog about is called Waylian. And this, I was looking it over and doing a little research, but Rowena did give me some update about it. And then I went and looked on YouTube and found the stories about this whale. Um, and they sing one of the songs called Waylian 52. So I'll do a different vlog about that because I sure did get teary eyed. It is a sad story. And they touch on this with their songs. And just like that, <coughs> that one song spring day i think i might just do another vlog but i encourage you to listen to that song look it up on youtube about spring day and the meaning about it because it's very touching so um i don't think i did justice to bts with this little vlog that i'm doing but just want you guys to know that there's a lot of k-pop idols and a lot of k-pop groups out there and i'm glad that i'm um, army and i found BTS because they're very positive and you know it's very clean the music so I share my passion and these songs <coughs> from BTS with my niece and nephew and they're like six and four years old their songs are very clean and you know being 
that they're from the Asian um, market or the Asian community, you know, they're very reserved. And so a lot of their stuff, even the K-dramas, I love it so much because they're very clean. They don't have to sell sex to get people to view. Right now, K-dramas on Netflix are so high and you're lucky if by episode six or episode 10 in a K-drama, if they hold hands or touch each other. I mean, I've seen them kissing a lot more now, but come on, we're this 2021. But back when I was watching it, <coughs> they barely held hands and touched each other in like the sixth or the 10th episode. And I'd be like dying like, oh, give me something. Get, show me some affection. But they show it through their facial, ex facial expressions. They show it through their little gestures. And then you also got to understand the Korean culture and the way that they do their filming and the K-dramas. However they do it, they need to continue because they got me. I mean, I'd be like, Kam Sam Ni Da. Dude, I love that stuff. <coughs> so um, I just wanted to take this time to share with you guys, you know, my my um, passion for this group, BTS, and that I, the magazine. And um, I do highly recommend that you, you know, go get it just for your curiosity's sake or just because Be Nice told you to go get it. Ainga, go get it <laughs> and um, read to, um, again, again um, big thanks to uh, my friend Rowena for, um, you know, getting me into the BTS groove. And now I listen to all kinds of K-pop. And if you want to be on my K-pop uh, page and my K-drama page, please let me know. Comment below and subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's what I'm supposed to say. So, um, and then I can, I can put you on. So I'm not saying that you have to watch K-dramas. I'm not saying that you have to listen to K-pop, but I'm just saying that these are things that I enjoy. And they kept me going, especially during the pandemic the covid you know the quarantine that's when uh bts yeah they really saved me you know i was like all into them watching everything and that's when i was stuck in my room watching all my k dramas but i can't say that i just watch k dramas because i do watch chinese dramas i watch filipino dramas <coughs> thailand dramas as long as they have them subtitles, I am good to go. I watch Bollywood, so I'm very open, very international. You know, I watch novellas. I haven't in, like, years, but I can jive with the novellas as well. And um, so I'm, I'm just open to watching all kinds of stuff. But K-dramas right now are my number one. K-pop right now is my number one. And um, if you uh, watch Nacho Libre... Ramses is number one. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I had for you guys tonight. I mean, there's other exciting and, and nice things inside this magazine. And um, I just really wanted to, to share with you guys um, just those few things about BTS. And um, hopefully their message will resonate to all of you because they're all about being positive. They're all about the human race, not one race, but the human race, humanity in itself. Everyone be positive. You're not alone. You don't walk alone. We'll be there for you. And so they're able to touch every single race there is. And every single person in ARMY, that's why they're so strong, is because they feel that genuine love and appreciation from BTS. And I do too. So my bias is J-Hope. Yeah, he dances like a Melly. Well, he's bomb. His story, I love him too. And my bias record, meaning the other person, that I like after him is um, Sugar, cause he is a straight up rapper and he just like puts it out there. Like he doesn't try to sugarcoat anything. It is what it is for him. And I think that's best because he speaks his mind through his rapping and he's, um, you know, he he's a very quiet, you know, actions speak louder than words is what, what I feel like Sugar does. And um, all of the boys, I mean, they're all good, all seven of them. So if you don't know anything about BTS, you just got a little pinch from me. And I don't even think I did a great job, but I'm just being me. I'm not trying to be, you know, trying to be all whoever, someone I'm not. I'm just being me. So again, guys, have a good evening. And I'm sorry, this is going to, I'm just going to round it up to 30 minutes. I have like 28 seconds left. I hope everyone's doing good on this Monday. Have a great evening. 
And um, if you haven't listened to BTS, I suggest you do. Don't forget to go and see on YouTube, Spring Day, <coughs> the explanation of that song. All right, on that note, so far, so far. Thank you, guys, and peace out. <laughs>